Next question is from Rolex Sabor. Yeah. What are the primary items you look at for new client assessments? The primary items that you look at for an assessment? I'm I'm one of the more important things. Okay. So if I look at the whole assessment, which includes the questions that I'm asking, because that I, that makes a big difference. I'm asking questions like, um, how many days a week can you realistically work out uh, long term? This is a very important question because that's going to help me determine what kind of workout I'm going to be putting you on. If you tell me it's only once a week, that's going to be different than if you tell me it's three days a week. Also, I'm also trying to get you to start with something that's going to be consistent. And, and typically people, when they start working out super gung-ho and they say they want to work out five days a week, you got to find out what the realistic forever number is and start there. Their goals, that's obviously important. That's going to determine the workout and the nutrition advice. I'm going to give the person their exercise history. So you want to have a good questionnaire essentially so you know who you're working with. Then the second thing is I'm going to be looking at their movement. Now I'm going to be doing a movement assessment. Now, since we've created Maps Prime, the Maps Prime assessment has become one of my favorite mm -hmm. movement assessments. It's become my favorite because it's simple. Simple is almost always better than complex, even if simple is not quite as accurate as complex because simple is easy to administer. I could do it quickly. And here's the truth when you train a client you're always assessing their movement. So it's like I do an assessment one time. This is what I, now this is what I go off for the whole time I train you forever. Every time you work out with me, I'm watching how you move. So those are the main things that I'm looking at. Well, I don't think I can add anything to that. The only thing I would add is to tell people to, if you're asking this question and if you're curious about that, you absolutely should be signed up to the webinar, right? So it's free. Go to the, the mapsprimewebinar.com and sign up and watch Justin take Doug through an assessment and you know, I, and, and I'm not sure what this person is looking for. If you're, if it's more questions like the park you stuff that mm -hmm. you'd be asking, or it's more like, what are you looking at as far as like their movement? Because those are two different yeah. things, right? They both gain a lot of information for, uh, for you as a trainer. Uh, and both are equally valuable cause to your point. So yeah. like asking questions about their commitment level and how many times a week they want to train is extremely important if I'm going to build a program. Uh, but n I think nothing, it trumps, uh, looking at how they move because yeah. that's the number one thing that a way I can help them. I think that, yeah. It, and it's a great place to continue the conversation that you start initially by asking those questions. But like we had mentioned before, and people have asked us questions like this, a lot of times they just don't, they're not aware that they need to uh, reveal that information to you. Like I was injured, you know, five years ago and I walk a certain way and I, you know, I feel tightness and you're not going to get any of that information until you actually put them through the movements. And so what's very revealing through these three, you know, very simple tests is it covers all the bases of all the different options for the joints uh, mm -hmm. to kind of show you uh, kind of a, a little bit of a history of what, uh, you know, they've been through and what kind of abilities that they have. And, and then, you know, that way you can take that information, draw up more of a vision of, of what they're going to accomplish uh, by working with you. And I think that's that's what they want to hear the most is they want to know that there's a plan and it's pretty specific to them and they could feel immediate results from it. Yeah. And, you know, OK, so here I'll tell you what a bad assessment is besides a trainer not looking at anything. That's the worst. Here's another one that a lot of trainers don't realize is bad. The overly complex assessment where they're doing measurements and they're looking at angles and they're doing all kinds of insane stuff that's it's it's too much yeah. unless you're working with like an injury and you're a rehab specialist it's too much stuff because the reality is as you're training them their body's going to change you have to assess them every time you train them yep. and really here's the value of an assessment for a trainer 100% um, here's here's a little secret okay the value of an assessment for a trainer is to show your value to a potential client so that they can hire you. Because again, you assess them every single time you train them. There's no amount of information you can get with one assessment that's going to last you longer than yeah. a month. After that, that assessment, you can might as well throw it out the window because the person's been working out for a month and things have changed. 